uh, one of the fields that I think is going to be taking off in the next decade or so, just how maxillary expansion has become super popular in the last 10 years and effective and life-changing for a lot of patients. I think uh, mandibular expansion is the same. Before I was doing a lot of mandibular expansion, we were doing a lot of, uh, and I still do, uh, surgically facilitated orthodontic therapy, SFOT, uh, which I'm sure you're familiar with. But Are you doing that yourself? Yes. Yeah. Uh so, you know, SFOT is a great procedure, um, but you're really not expanding the skeletal bone of the mandible, right? It's an orthodontic expansion at the end of the day, which has benefits. You get more tongue space, uh, which is which is important. But I think one of the benefits of mandibular transverse uh, expansion, we call it MMDO, mandibular midline distraction osteogenesis, is you're actually getting floor of mouth expansion as well. So the airway responses I'm seeing in those cases are really, really powerful and amazing, just like the airway responses you get in transverse maxillary expansion, as opposed to what you would get with an orthodontic expander. Uh, so I think we're kind of headed in that direction of doing more and more of that uh, over the next few years as we as we perfect it the way we've perfected maxillary expansion. Super interested to learn more about uh, mand this mandibular expansion that you're doing. So it's a kind of mandibular midline or mandibular symphysial distraction that you're doing. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. And what what's the mechanism by which that positively affects the airway? So you get transverse expansion of the mandible. With that, you get floor of mouth expansion. So tongue space really improves the floor of mouth muscles, you know, open up. Um, and so the airway results are, are pretty dramatic compared to just doing orthodontic expansion of the lower arch. Um, it also allows you to push maxillary expansion more. You know, often we're limited by how much we can expand someone on the maxilla by the mandible because it's like you know most people were lucky and you know their maxillary transverse hypoplastic they're narrow up top but then we're lucky that you know their mandible is wider than their maxilla and we have room to widen them as much as they need to be widened up top and we're okay we could just do some ortho on the bottom run, run cross elastics whatever we do to widen the lower arch orthodontically and they're fine but I don't know the number, maybe 15% of patients, they're narrow up top, but then you're like, man, we don't have a lot of room to really widen you as much as you need on the maxilla because your mandible is also hypoplastic. There's not enough room. I can only safely, let's say by safely, I mean, not put the orthodontist in a bad position and overexpand someone. Um, and, uh, and, and you're kind of limited by how much you can expand them because their mandible is also hypoplastic. And so those are the cases where we were doing SFOT. And like I said, it was, it was good. It was a great way to get a few more millimeters of expansion on the maxilla. But with the mandibular midline distraction, you're kind of not as limited. There's, you know, just like you can kind of, you know, you can expand as far as the expander will go on the maxilla. You can theoretically expand someone as much as you need to on the mandible to be able to expand them where they need to get to on the maxilla. How do you manage torquing of the TMJs uh, with mandibular uh, expansion? That's that's the biggest thing that I speak about with patients uh, because um, it's hard. Uh, there there always will be a little bit of torquing uh, of the of the condyles. Um, luckily, um, with the new expanders, um, it's not as bad as the old expanders. It, it's really kind of going to be like the vector of expansion uh, that dictates how much torquing you get. So you have to try to. Um, kind of set up the uh, vector of the torque to be as parallel with the occlusal plane as possible and try to get a symmetrical expansion from the top of the symphysis to the, to the bottom of the symphysis as possible. Um, so but that, that, you still that, get some that way you don't get any of this, right? Correct. You want, or, you want it you to only be, get this. You want to get this. Yeah. So I, I can show you a, a superimposed CBCT later, maybe you can drop it in the video where I can show you uh, kind of the how parallel we're getting these expansions now. Um, Is there a specific expander that you use? I've, I've used a bunch of different ones. Um, you know, KLS makes makes a nice one. Um, the KLS one's nice. The, the, the downfall to it, 
uh, I would say is that it requires a second operation to remove because most of the expander is going to be um, subgingival. It's going to be like super periosteal. And so to remove it, you have to do another incision, another dissection to get the screws out. So they all work pretty similar, um, uh, but it's really about placement. It's about you know, making sure you're setting things up as parallel as possible and creating really good vector expansion. And d does uh, the KLS Marn expander, does that sit here uh, under the front teeth or does it sit inside of the arch? In, inside of the arch, mm. behind the incisors. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. And um, like uh, in terms of millimeters, roughly, how much can you get on the mandible uh, before you start getting into sort of la la land, like with Marby, I feel like the limit is, I mean, uh, somewhere around a centimeter and you start really getting into like, hey, whoa, 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 let's pump the brakes on this because things start to get wonky. But with mandibular expansion, I would suspect it would be significantly less than that. It's it's less. I, I, I would say... My case number is a lot lower, right? I've done hundreds of maxillary expansion cases. I've not done hundreds of mandibular expansion cases. I've I, I've done a lot, but not but but not anywhere near as much. Mm -hmm. uh, with maxillary expansion, it's funny you say La La Land because uh, there does seem to be a like kind of asymptotic curve to not just where you know things do get a little wonky um, with the expansion, but. I, I do see a point of diminishing returns after a while. You know, I, I would say that, for example, like the first three millimeters of expansion, you get a lot more airway benefit than you would in the last three millimeters, especially let's say you're expanding someone 12 millimeters, you know, that the, they'll have like this really, really amazing response, those first seven, eight millimeters. And then it kind of tapers off, they'll still get some benefit, but there's definitely like uh, a point of diminishing returns. Um, with the mandible, I would say it's closer to around seven or eight millimeters is kind of where I'm, where I'm seeing that same effect. And if you're expanding the mandible like this from the, uh, at the front near the chin, is it true that you're actually bringing the ramus in when you do that so that the jawline can often end up narrowing sort of in the posterior or do you not find that to be the case? No, I, I don't find that at all. Um, so this, with the 3D superimposition, you'll see that actually, if anything, it widens a little bit. The chin also kind of widens and squares off a little bit as you would expect as you widen at the symphysis. Um, so uh, no, I, I'd say the jawline in general gets a little bit more squared up. So yeah. you do get some expansion at the molars. It's not just at the canines and at the front that you get expansion. Correct. You'll get a little expansion here. It's obviously more dramatic here. Um, it's kind of like if you can imagine with maxillary expansion with mid-face distraction, right? You get most of the expansion down by where the incisors are, but you're still expanding at the zygos. So it's it's a similar type of thing where you get a little bit of expansion at the angles, but most of the expansion is at the symphysis. Just like with maxillary expansion, you get most of the expansion down by the incisors and palate, but you're also getting uh, some zygomatic expansion as well.